Let us teach you math games. Put away your worksheets. Grab your dice and base ten. Cause math should be hands on. Magic things will happen. Hey, Math Maniacs, it's Vanessa. And Ashley. And we are so happy to be back bringing you some new math games. Uh, today's math game that we're excited to share with you is actually copyrighted by our dear friends at Boxcars and One Eye Jacks. It is called Edition Baseball, and it's one that we love playing with our students. Um, it is one that's kind of evolved over the years, so you will see some modifications if you're familiar with their original version, but we do want to definitely say thank you to Boxcars. Thank you for letting us share this game. It's definitely a favorite in our classroom. You will also notice there are quite a few similarities between this game and Garbage Can, but there are a few important differences that we're going to show you. Also, please stick around because at the end of this video, we're going to show you how you can modify it to make it Operation Baseball, to basically use with any operation, as well as we'll do a quick little kind of demo of how we work on rounding strategies with our students because this game does involve estimation for which rounding is a very helpful skill. We can't wait to show you. Here we are with our game boards for Addition Baseball, and as you can tell, it looks very similar to Garbage Can. Difference being is that we've offset the game board a bit, so you can see we have things over here on the left side to place our numbers, but we do have this open space here um, with a scoreboard. Yeah, the object of the game, just the same as Garbage Can, is that you are trying to indeed find or create the largest sum. All right, yes, and for in terms of playing with the cards, once again, you're going to want to take out your tens, queens, kings, and jokers. Uh, we often keep the jacks in just because our students love using jacks as zeros. One of the other main differences as we're dealing out the cards, instead of deciding which place value spot you're going to put a card in each time you turn it over, you do get to see your entire hand before making the decision. Get Ashley's excited. eager to go. Yeah, She's got to wait. Yeah. Uh, also, as you can tell, because we are playing with a three by three digit edition, to, um, and then one garbage can space, that means each player gets seven cards. So we've got three here. Now that we each have our hand, now we get to look at them and decide where we're gonna put them to make the greatest sum. I do often encourage my students that once they have their cards, they might even want to put them, say, just above or just below where they're going to write them in uh, so that once they use a card once, they don't forget and accidentally use it a second time in a spot. I'm just going to go ahead and place all my cards at the top just so you have an idea of what I was dealt. And I just kind of placed mine in orders from greatest to least because what I teach my students is that putting the largest number in the hundreds column um, will create the larger sum. And I see that I have a two, so I'm definitely, oh, you're so quick. So I do like the strategy though, of having them place them in um, descending order from greatest to least. That could really help them in terms of figuring out which place value spots they'd like to assign to them. So that is definitely. a neat strategy. Yeah, thank you. All right. Okay, so now what happens is, uh, how the scoring for this addition baseball comes in is, we also, the other part is before you do your addition, for the actual number. This is a great game for practicing estimation of sums. And so if obviously one of the first things you have to work on with your students is how to estimate numbers. Mm -hmm. and, and we find teaching them about how to round to either the nearest 10 or the nearest 100 to be very beneficial. And once again, we'll do a quick little demo for how we do that afterwards. So here I'm gonna look at 900 and I'm going to round that, sorry, 942, I'm gonna round to 900 because the tens are four or it's less than 50. So I know it's actually closer to 900 on a number line than it would be to a thousand. And same thing, 521. 21 is much closer to 500 than it is to 600. So I'm gonna round and I'm gonna estimate as 900, 1,400 is my estimate. And I'm gonna now go ahead and do my addition while Ashley talks you through her estimate. So same thing, I'm teaching my students the first um, rounding to the nearest 10, then rounding to the nearest 100. I see that 53 is larger than 50, so I know that this is going to become 900 and then I'm looking at 43 that's below 50 so this one is going to be 800 and then when adding this up I am going to look and say oh doubles plus one 8 plus 8 is 16 plus one more is 17 and then when I add up here we've got six five plus four is nine and 800 plus 800 is 1600. Now one of the things we love about this game is that there's not just one winner 
both players have a chance to score some runs in the baseball game. So what happens is we suggest the partners switch the boards to double check their partner's work. So I'm gonna check Ashley's work, her, her estimate first. And if she, I think she has a reasonable estimate. I'm gonna give her one hit or one point. So mm -hmm. I do agree, so she gets one. I'm gonna double check her answer if she was to rescind. It's correct. So she gets two runs so far in this inning of addition baseball. She's gonna double check my work. Same thing, I see that her Rounding was accurate, it was right, one point, and yes, her addition is correct, so she also gets two points. So we're tied so far in this inning, first inning of each having two runs. The third runner, what we call the homer, goes to the greatest sum. So looking here, we both have 1,000, but when we move over to the hundreds, we can see that Ashley has more. She has 600s, whereas I have 400s, so she has the greater number. She gets the home run of the inning, so it's mm -hmm. currently a score of three to two. We often suggest to students, you know, if you have the time, play nine innings and see who has the most runs at the end of the All right, so we just wanted to show you how you can differentiate this game to meet the uh, learning outcomes as well as the needs of your students. So we demonstrated with three digit by three digit addition. Obviously you can go to two digit plus two digit addition, four digit or five digit addition. It's also great for playing with subtraction multiplication, which of course you could do two digit by two digit, three digit by one digit, um, etc., or even long division. So these are just a few different ways for how to, you could set up your board and we're sure you're already thinking of how else you can modify the game to meet the needs of your students. All right, so as promised, we're just gonna quickly show you how we tend to do uh, rounding in our class because we really do feel rounding and helping students learn how to estimate their sums while really help them with their mental math abilities and help them kind of figure out if the answers they're getting for their questions um, are reasonable or not. So we're just gonna quickly show you. It's nothing magical, it's not a game or anything, but this is just something that we do in our classrooms that we find really helps the students. Um, yeah. And they pick up quite quickly and then they feel pretty um, empowered and excited to round. And the great thing about it, you got five minutes left in the day, throw this up on the board and it's just that continuous practice. All right, so here's just a quick way that we tend to practice rounding um, to use in terms of estimating numbers with our students. So if I were to write uh, a number in the middle space, so let's say 467, what we do is we look at the number line that we have down here, and we know 467, we can get the students to kind of place where they think it would be on the number line. And then they write the number that comes before 467 in terms of nearest 100, as well as the nearest 100 that is more than 467. So they would then do that 467 is between 400 and 500. And then of course we talk about kind of rounding rules and where it would be, and we can see that 467 is closer to 500. So what we do is we just circle that it is. We would round 467 mentally to 500 to use it as a benchmark number when we're using mental math. So now you can see um, I have the same board that Vanessa had. The difference being is that I have a number line um, going in increments of 10. So I have from 10 to 100. So same thing. I will start with a number in the middle. Let's say I do 72. And then I have them place that on the number line. So looking probably out here or so. Um, and then they write the number that comes before where I put my marker. So 70 and, and then the number that comes after. 80 and then with this visual of where they marked it off they can clearly see uh, that it's closer to 70 but also we talked about some of those rules about looking at the ones column and the ones column becomes very bossy and tells the number on the left what to do and because it's below five um, then it rounds down to the nearest 10 so I would again would circle the 70. And you know, one of the other reasons why I love using the open number line is so often when you, you know, have the students, you know, think about which two tens it comes between. I often will have students say for the number 72, say, mm -hmm. oh, it's between 60 and 80. Right. Like they often forget that, oh no, it's actually 70 is the closest 10. So seeing it visually like this really helps them place um, where it is. And eventually, like, yes, we have this here now, they can visually, it. but eventually the ultimate goal is to get them to start visualizing it in their mind.